Welcome back to CBS This Morning. The top Democratic presidential contenders came out swinging in a fiery, contentious debate in Las Vegas last night. Former New York City Mayor Mayor Mike Bloomberg was on stage for the first time after surging in recent polls. It took just seconds for his rivals to take him on. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. We are giving a voice to people who are saying we are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth while a half a million people sleep out on the street tonight. I've been told many times to wait my turn and to step aside. And I'm not going to do that now, and I'm not going to do that because a campaign memo uh, from Mayor Bloomberg said this morning uh, that the only way uh, that we get a nominee is if we step aside for him. You Bloomberg was attacked on a variety of issues. He had a tense exchange with Elizabeth Warren after Bloomberg said he would not release former employees from non-disclosure agreements related to alleged harassment and discrimination. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? We have a very few non-disclosure agreements. Uh, how many is Let me there? finish. How many is there? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. They signed those agreements, so, and we'll live with it. So Senior political analyst and 60 Minutes correspondent John Dickerson is here, along with CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist Joel Payne. Good morning to both of you. So I think last night's debate was more of a bar fight than we'd seen prior. And Michael Bloomberg seemed to walk into the bar not expecting quite the fight he got. How do you think it'll affect his campaign? Yeah, they slammed the door at his coming out party, and then he had trouble opening it again. You know, one of the challenges when you're, when you're a new candidate is taking the incoming and then diffusing it and then saying, this is what I'm for. Yeah. He never got that opportunity. He never took or seized that opportunity. And if debates matter, they mattered in New Hampshire when Amy Klobuchar rose when she had a good performance. If debates matter, this was not a good night for Joe Is it going to matter, do you think? I, I think that's a lot to be determined because if you look at the early vote, there's over a million people who voted early in California. There's over two-thirds of the people who are going to vote in Nevada have already voted. So this was a good night for Elizabeth Warren. It was probably a good night for Bernie Sanders. Um, it probably was a bad night for Mike Bloomberg. But how much does it affect them in the long run? We'll see. But Jolie had to know those questions were coming. I think that's what everyone is talking about today. He knew the NDA, NDA questions were coming about women and about certainly about stop and frisk. What do you think happened? It's been such a long time since someone's probably challenged Mike Bloomberg on stage. I mean, it's been 10 years since his last debate. He's not used to, as a billionaire, having people challenge him and come at him and directly challenge his authority. I think um, it, it felt like he was running 20 miles an hour and everybody else was running 75 miles an hour. He literally felt like a visitor on the stage last night. Yes. He didn't feel like he was a part of the uh, party. I'm sure he feels like he's a part of the party right now. Elizabeth <laughs> Warren didn't feel like a visitor. Did she revitalize her campaign after a couple of disappointing finishes? She was, she, she basically checked every box. She was both on the attack. She was then generous when she jumped in to defend Amy Klobuchar. You felt like if a light blew out in the studio, she'd climb on a ladder and fix it. She did everything <laughs> yeah. in that debate. Now, the question is, does that, does that help her campaign? We'll have to see. The wonderful thing is the voters get to make their decision. But she uh, was really, really came to play. And if iron sharpens iron, it was a real benefit for her to have Michael Bloomberg there because they wheeled on stage the kind of person she's been essentially attacking in her campaign. There was one of the questions... Go ahead. Well, why don't we get to some sound? Because one of the questions yeah. going into this debate was, uh, do voters want a billionaire in the form of Michael Bloomberg or do they want an anti-billionaire in the form of Bernie Sanders who says billionaires should not exist? Let's look at an exchange between the two of them and talk we about it. have a grotesque and immoral distribution of wealth and income. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong. That's immoral. Mayor Bloomberg, should you exist? I can't speak for all billionaires. All I know is I've been very lucky, made a lot of money. I worked very hard yeah. for it, and I'm giving okay. it away. What we need to do to deal with this grotesque level of income and wealth inequality is make sure that those people who are working, you know what, Mr. Bloomberg, wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well.
And it is important that those workers are able to share the benefits also. So, Joel, what do you think? Who got the best of who? Well, look, I think they both got their shots, and particularly later in the night, Bloomberg actually strengthened a bit. I thought he had some good pushback on Sanders about being the most famous socialist millionaire in the country, had three houses. Well, that was a good pushback. I also think the fact that Bloomberg's moments were late in the debate, and it, it matters so much when these things happen. Yeah. Probably, you guys know this as people who are on TV, um, the, the, when viewers are watching the most matters. And that first hour, Bloomberg really got eviscerated. So I'd be curious to see when most people were watching and when yeah. they saw the impactful yeah. attacks. People I think that's something to bed. It's that simple well. at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. Maybe that's why, since he had better moments at the end, that his campaign can come out today and say he had a fairly and You have to night. win the spin, wow. and that's why winning the spin winning is so important. Spin. Here's the thing. It was like the NDA question to Bloomberg, though. you got to know this is coming at you. They're talking about capitalism and whether it's been broken in this debate for months and months and months. Here comes somebody who could have said, uh, given an answer that had that appealed to the various different parts of the Democratic coalition, and when I was talking about opening the door to your candidacy, that was an opportunity for Bloomberg to make the case about how his wealth gives him some insight, or his time as a, as a boss gives him some insight, and he never really took that opportunity. There was an interesting moment between Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar. Yes. We pull that, yeah. that sound, too. I want to get your take on it. You're staking your candidacy on your Washington experience. You're on the committee that oversees border security. You're on the committee that does trade. You're literally in uh, part of the committee that's overseeing these things. And we're not able to speak to literally the first thing about the politics of the country you, to ourselves. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? I'm I saying that you said shouldn't trivialize I made that an error. People sometimes forget names. I am the one that has, number one, has the experience based on passing over 100 Thank you, bills. This that was, felt the, so personal. We, we should say this was this was right after she she was defending that she couldn't name the president of Mexico. Mexico. But that felt personal to me. Yeah, to I, you? I, I also I might want to consult Clark Kellogg on that because that felt like the midwest mid midwestern uh, bracket uh, for the NCAA tournament. It <laughs> yes. felt like the two people who were fighting for the the heartland bracket, yeah. and those folks are going after the same voters. Yeah. Buttigieg and Klobuchar are trying to go after the same chunk of the Democratic electorate. That's why it's gotten so personal. I think Buttigieg's candidacy is almost it's almost an insult to Amy Klobuchar in itself. And she I certainly think seemed to take it that way. Not to like felt that yeah. way. What did you think, John? About well, they're, yeah, they're, they're not going to be on each other's Christmas card list. They, um, they're fighting, as Joel said, they're fighting for that kind of moderate position. We also have not even talked about Joe Biden, um, which is uh, which, which is says something right there. Says yeah. something there. And, yeah. and so at the end of this debate, everybody might have had their little moment. Nothing much was resolved in terms of that portion of the electorate, and they're fighting it out to see who can be at the top of it. That that debate there got a little down in the sort of a fact check or sort of a uh, quiz show kind of question about whether she knew. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth Warren jumped in and said, this is why this is not important. We should talk about important things. Another way in which she asserted herself in something that was happening way on the other side of the debate stage. All right, also, I Donald Trump. I can't remember one memorable no, moment from Donald Trump last night. So and I think that's what Donald a lot of Trump. establishment yeah. Democrats yeah. are going to be concerned about. Good night about. for him. His name yeah. Joel, came Joel Payne and John Dickerson, uh, you'll have to come back for the sequel because there will be a sequel. CBS <laughs> News will co-host yeah. that sequel. That is the next Democratic presidential debate in Charleston, South Carolina. Our very old, own Gail King and Nora O'Donnell will moderate, and they will be joined by Margaret Brennan, Major Garrett, and Bill Whitaker of 60 Minutes in the Questioning. The Congressional Black Caucus Institute is the co-host and Twitter is a partner. You can see that debate on Tuesday, February 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, right here on CBS and CBSN. Yeah, looking forward to that.